It is Wednesday, my dudes, which means it is time for another first thoughts and initial impressions epic seven video. This one will be on the Moonlight five star that I'm probably going to be most excited for this year. Dragon Bride Senya. I super don't have the mystics for her, but again, super excited for the character and can't wait to talk about her. As with all of my impressions videos, I'll give you my two cents on the character. Do I think she's good? Where would I play her? What sets would I play her? What artifacts would I play her on? All those things you've come to expect from me in a first impressions video. As always, if you liked the video, please consider liking it or leaving a comment down below to appease the algorithm gods. I'm almost at 10,000 subscribers here on YouTube, so if you could consider leaving a subscribe if you really enjoyed it, would mean the world to me. Without any further ado, though, let's take a look at Senya's S3 animation. Do you vow to share with me, for better or worse, every joy and every sorrow of this life? Like I promised, I'll stand by your side until death do us part. I vow to love you. All right, I, I hope she loves me because I super don't love that S3 animation. I think it's actually one of the worst ones we've had in a very long time. It honestly looks unfinished and incomplete. Oh, well. <laughs> Anyways, in the English dub of Epic 7, Senya as well as Dragon Bride Senya is voiced by Reba Burr, who is a name that should be familiar to you because we literally just talked about her because she's the voice of Sea Phantom Politis. Also, can we talk about this artwork? Like... I don't know what's going on here, but, like, is this, like, the ship that I I didn't know I wanted in this game? Anyways, Dragon Bride Senya is a light knight of the Sagittarius Zodiac symbol, so she shares a stat line with Yulha, Fallen Cecilia, Ambitious Tywin, and the collab hero, Albedo. Taking a look at her stats, she has 894 attack, 694 defense, 6840 health, 104 speed, 50% critical hit chance, 150% critical hit damage, and no starting effect this or effect resistance. This translates to really high health and defense for either a tank or a bruiser, which you would love to see, but overall just below average speed. Her imprint is going to be health percentage for the team and health percentage for herself, which is fine, not the best, but not the worst. And considering if you are a Senya enthusiast already, you probably have a ton of dupes of her because, well, the character needed a plus 30 Spear of the New Dawn to be played anyway, which meant that you probably, like me, rolled on all of her banners like crazy whenever possible. Before we talk about the character, as always, let's go over the kit first, starting with Senya's S2 passive, Bride's Resolve. Increases Senya's maximum health by 10%. When health of the ally in the back row except for the caster is 50% or less after being attacked, dispels all debuffs from Senya and the ally in the back row and activates Bridal Prayer. Can only be activated once every four turns. Bridal Prayer is a non-attack skill that grants a barrier to Senya and an ally in the back row for two turns, as well as grants Oath of Punishment to Senya for two turns before resetting skill cooldowns of Senya. Barrier Strength increases proportional to Senya's max health. Oath of Punishment is an undispellable buff that says they cannot be affected by any debuffs or some harmful effects. After attacking on the bearer's turn, deals 2500 fixed damage to the target. I feel like I've seen this passive before. Bride's Resolve? Maid's Pride? Hmm. Seems similar. Moving on to Senya's skill 3, it is Overcoming Hardship. You acquired 3 souls upon use, and it has a 4-5 to five turn cooldown depending on Malagora. Pierces through to attack the enemy and increase the combat readiness of Senya and the ally in the back row by 30%. Penetrates the target's defense but cannot trigger a critical hit. Damage dealt increases proportional to Senya's max health. When Senya is granted Oath of Punishment, attacks all enemies instead. Soul Burn effect for the cost of 10 souls increases the damage dealt. And finally, the skill 1, 1 step, approaches and attacks the enemy with a spear and increases the speed of Senya for 1 turn. Damage dealt increases proportional to Senya's max health. Alright, now that we know the kit, let's talk about the character. Starting with the S2 passive, Bride's Resolve. I think this passive is incredible. First off, 10% max health means we can very easily bring Senya into the 35,000 plus HP territory. In fact, in the video, I believe she has 37,000 health. This character is going to be exceedingly difficult to kill, I feel like, for a lot of players. Her passive also functions very similarly to Adventure Raz, in that if you try to focus down the backslot hero, Senya will protect that character with a massive barrier. 
After that, she's basically going to enter Ram's Demon Mode, which is what you basically get with Oath of Punishment. She's unaffected by all debuffs, and all other attacks that she has are going to gain 2,500 fixed damage, which is massive. Unfortunately, it is only on her turn that she gets a 2,500 fixed damage, so Counter Set is probably out for this character as a result, and Elbrus Ritual Sword is probably also out as far as uh, artifact options go. But let's go back to that 2,500 fixed damage. That thing is pretty massive, especially when you combine it with the skill 3 Overcoming Hardship. That skill, being AoE and having 100% defense penetration, means that if your opponent is on something that's very fragile, like say Cleave, they must focus Senya, or they risk dying outright. And if you have another must focus unit in the back of her composition, then your opponent is in for a very, very bad time. So what do I mean by this? So what if you have Ikarina in the back who punishes your opponent if anyone else on her team goes under 50%, right? Well, if you have Senya in the front, she punishes your opponent if anyone in the back slot goes under 50%. So the common way to counterplay Karina is to focus her down. Otherwise, they, they you know, the enemy cleave risks just outright dying. Well, Senya says if you focus down Karina, they are in trouble anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Now, there are other characters as well that you could put in the slot that are very, very powerful. Genoa can solo basically entire teams by himself unless you get him off the board right away. Well, same thing here. You focus down Genoa, well, she completely cleanses him, and then she becomes turbo mode, gets to CR push him to the front, and then also dunk the entire enemy team. I think that you can make some really, really powerful compositions around ML Senya as a result, especially in something like Guild Wars, like Sea Phantom Politis plus Genoa. Already a really, really powerful comp, right? And then the third slot is usually something like Navy Captain Landy. Now, with Dragon Bride Senya, you can have Dragon Bride in the front, you can have Politis off to the side, and Genoa in the back, and that's just going to be a hellish defense to play against in Guild Wars as a result. One of the issues, though, that I have with this character is that Oath of Punishment is what grants this character all of her debuff immunity, as well as the bonus damage. Now, the thing is, Oath of Punishment can only be gained through Bridal Prayer, which is a non-attack skill. Now, we've all seen what happens when Nikwal basically binds Lionheart Sermia. Sure, you're going to get the cleanse portion of Lionheart's S2, but you don't get the actual like activation of the skill. And that's going to be the same here. You're going to not actually get the Oath of Punishment. You'll get the cleanse, but Bridal Prayer is not going to come out. So buying from the Qual and Birgitta, who we are going to be talking about in the other video, those characters feel like they shut this character down really hard, which is not something I really want to see on my slow health-based tank or bruiser. Those kinds of characters already really struggle versus Nikwal. So I'm not really seeing why we want to make another unit that gets hosed by it. Bridal Prayer also being a non-attack skill does kind of hurt the character as well. Politus is seeing a massive resurgence at the moment. So if we just forcibly trigger Bridal Prayer, our whole team might just take a ton of damage and a ton of debuffs as a result. And on top of that... Celine is about to get the biggest glow up of all glow ups in this upcoming patch. She looks on paper legitimately terrifying. Even with the barrier that Bride's Resolve gives to the back line, Celine probably still murders that unit through Senya, right? You get the extra souls, the Soulburn Thunderclap. That character is probably dead, dead, dead out. Now, so those are two big knocks against the character. That said, I still think the passive is insane. The problem is. Again, it does have these glaring issues. And that's good in theory from a design standpoint, right? Because, well, the character seems fair. There's counterplay. My problem is, in 2024 Epic 7, everything is just so broken that having a well-thought-out unit that actually has counterplay often can translate to might not be that good. I think that speaks more about the state of this game, though. Than how good or bad I think Dragon Bride Senya is as a unit. 
So let's talk about possible builds for her. I think Senya just wants to be on whatever build you're going to give her that has the best midpoint between bulk and speed. For me personally, I'm probably going to shoot for around 35,000 or higher HP on either speed set, revenge set, possibly protection set. As for artifacts, I think playing her on 3F from Albedo's banner feels like a no-brainer if you want damage, especially given this character's um, massive uh, bulk. Yeah, let's go with bulk. Her massive bulk. <laughs> that said, there's uh, something to be said about this character being played on Arius or Adam and Shield, in my opinion. Last Rider Crowd was not a good Arius holder. But people still played him on Arius because it was just a generically strong artifact that a high health hero could hold. Senya is a far sturdier character than almost anyone in Epic 7. It's basically her, Albedo, Eaton, possibly Crimson Armin. They're like the four tankiest characters in the whole game. That in of itself means that she is really good at taking up the shield, so to speak. Like holding the Arius if I need her to. I think overall, this character to me is a must pull Moonlight 5 star if you are somebody who plays standard or turn 2. If you're one of my turn 2 brothers and sisters, I think that we need to pull for Dragon Bride Senya, which is kind of bad for me because I have like two multis and I'm literally full pity away. So doesn't look good for me. But yeah, she gives us setups that we could use to box out aggressive and cleave style strategies. She's great with characters like Karina, Genoa. She's good at protecting heroes like Laia. She might be great with the new updated Blood Moon Haste. The problem that I have with her is that while I think she's really strong, she's nowhere near as broken as C Phantom Politis is. And with the changes to World Arena that are coming in this very same patch, I just think she's a strong, fair character in a sea of potentially broken bullshit that might be coming our way in this game. Now, what do I mean by that? For those of you guys who didn't look at the patch notes from this morning, the next World Arena season will make it so that the third pick for both players cannot be post-banned. Essentially, whatever character you lock in at pick three, your opponent has to give it to you. And that applies to your opponent as well. Whatever they pick, you have to play against. So as great as I think Senya is, she's not anything if my opponent has an unbannable Nikwal. If my opponent has an unbannable Green Selene, that thing could probably rip through the barrier that Senya provides fairly easily and get to the character like no questions asked. And I dread playing against uh, a Fumir or Prince Sid cleave where I can't ban the Fumir or Prince Sid, right? It doesn't exactly seem fair, like I'm just going to get locked out of the game. Now, I am happy still for the character because we as slow players got a really powerful, in my opinion, new toy. I think that this is a very powerful character, but she just feels fair compared to what I see speed and cleave players seemingly always getting access to, especially in the face of this unbannable third pick. But who knows? Maybe I'm just downplaying the character like I did with Abyssal Euphine. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Dragon Bride Senya and how you'll probably build her. Anyways, don't forget to check out the impressions for Birgitta, which also went live at the same time as this video. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye now.